everyone! So it's time for the next installment of our new Rainbow Reads series, and we're finally up to yellow. I don't know yeah. why I say finally, but I don't know about you guys, but I just love a good yellow book. I was surprised awesome. at how many I found on my yeah. bookshelf. Yeah, same. Yeah. It's like they're yeah. everywhere. <laughs> I'm excited for this. Yellow books are some of my favorites. Okay. So. And I think we each picked five. I yep. have six because I couldn't narrow it. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, so as per usual, we'll just start down with Crystal and we'll kind of come this way. Yes. So, um, I'm going to start with The Haters <laughs> by Jesse Andrews. Um, I just love Jesse Andrews. I liked uh, Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl. Um, I really enjoyed this even more. Um, it's about a couple of friends who go to like jazz band camp <laughs> in the summer and it's just not really what they expected it to be and they end up meeting this girl and the three of them go on this like impromptu kind of sneaky road trip and Fun. they try and play in like these get gigs at like dive bars and stuff <laughs> and it's just like it's a good coming of age story too and I listened to both read this and listened to the audiobook and I just really liked it and it's super yellow. <laughs> Very yellow. Like, all the yellow. <laughs> the um, humor in this one is specific. Some people yes. love it, and like some I people did. Like you love it, and it wasn't. It's very teenage boy. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, which isn't shouldn't be a thing, but you know, it, it is like sixteen-year-old boys were like yes. maybe a little on the vulgar side. Okay. I, did, like, okay. I went to high school with. This. Yeah, yeah totally. I found it very like it's true. familiar. Right, you know. <laughs> But, uh, Which I kind of appreciate because you don't see that yeah. very often because that is like teenage boys are kind of gross sometimes. Yeah. So are teenage girls, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's true. laughs> I like how uh, in both of his books, like some of it's written in like kind of a script format. Mm -hmm. They just put their names and like the actions and the sentences they say, which kind of ups the humor for me sometimes. Yeah. But uh, I recommend it. I really, yeah, totally. I really like it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and blurb by Love Grossman, who is like a huge author. There you go. <laughs> um, so my first one is an Owl Crate Jr. pick, and that is Grump, the fairly true tale of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs by Liesl Shirtliff. Um, this is Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, obviously, but all from Grumpy's point of view. And it's like a very different take on mm -hmm. the world of dwarves. And it was just like really funny and clever and I love the world that she built and there's lots and lots of talk about how delicious gemstones are mm. in this. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just, it was great. She, she's written several like twisted fairy tales now, um, mm -hmm. or fractured fairy tales. Um, so this is the fourth of her fairly true fairy tales. She also has done uh, Jack and the Beanstalk, Stock, Rumpelstiltskin, and Red Riding Hood, but uh, this is the one I started with and I highly recommend it. And they're it. not related, really. No, they're, anyway. all, they're not related, although you do actually, they're kind of like little hidden Easter eggs. Oh, that's eggs fun. So fun. That you do, I think, encounter right. uh, whoever's having a book written about them next uh, in each of the books. That's fun. fun. But you can read them in whatever order you yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a lot of fun. I, I highly recommend all of her books. That's really cool. Uh, so my first one is an owl crate pick and very different than Grump. <laughs> um, but we couldn't make a yellow books list without mentioning More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera, our okay. fave. Um, this is, well, if you've read Adam Silvera before, you know he's probably not going to make you feel really happy. No. <laughs> well, shatter you into pieces. <laughs> so, but this is about a boy named Aaron, and they kind of live in this, it's a world that feels very, very much like ours. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Except there's one kind of science fiction twist. Yes. Um, and it's just about this boy named... It's just a coming-of-age story about this boy named Aaron and his kind of bad relationship with his family and his relationship with a like, very patient girlfriend and maybe kind of falling in love with a boy for the first time. Yeah. And it's just so amazing. <laughs> and this was Adam's debut and... Oh, I just... To this day, I need to reread it, but I don't want to because I know it'll hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just so cool the way he wrote an entire novel, really, that just feels, it, it's exactly like our world, but there's just this one thing that's yeah. different. Mm -hmm. And it's just so well done. And we love him and hate him. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but yeah, so this is my first choice and just so mm -hmm. yellow. That right. was on my original stack yeah. of books to bring because we, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a video like you said without one of Adam's books because <laughs> we just love him and it's very yellow. Right. 
<laughs> All right, next up, Crystal. So, I'm very glad you said you brought an extra book because I noticed we brought the same book. Oh, okay. So, um, for the next one, I brought Short and Skinny by uh, Mark Patuli. <laughs> oh, there you go. Which was a gift from Sally. <laughs> um, I loved this. It's uh, a little graphic novel about a really skinny boy. It's semi-autobiographical? It's, I think, full-on semi. Full-on, yeah. okay. Full-on full semi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's about when Mark was in middle school in the late 70s, and he's just this skinny little kid who wants to beef up over the summer. Yes. And he writes into those ads in the back of the comic books and stuff. And yeah, he orders like every, yeah. you know, workout it's one of those, tool like, and powder and all these things. But then, but then he sees a trailer for Star Wars and he's like, oh my God. And then he goes and sees Star Wars and it's a skinny, scrawny hero main character. Yeah. And he's just very creative. So he writes a parody script called Star Wars. <laughs> and I loved it as a, as a filmmaker, as a Star Wars fan, as yeah. a graphic novel person. He gets all his friends and he's, family involved in the, yeah. the, this movie that he's making. and. And like the set building that they do and like he like cuts up a curtain or a rug or something <laughs> of his mom's without asking to oh, make the Chewbacca, to make costume. The Chewbacca costume. It's so funny. It's like he plays with the characters' names. I think I was flipping through this last night and it's like fluke, sky stumbler, <laughs> yeah. and uh, barf vapor. <laughs> like it's just so Gross. funny. I, I probably read it in the sitting or in mm. at least an evening and it was just it was just so much fun. I'm I'm tempted to go find a finished copy. Yeah, because we oh, both have the arc of it. It comes out this month. Yeah, go pick this up. Fun. Out in October. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun. It's very fun. Okay, well now, okay, so, so now one cross off five. my list. Now I'm yeah. down to five. That's great. <laughs> yeah. um, the next one on my list is a much butterier yellow than any of the <laughs> others we've yellow. chosen. But that is Hark a Vagrant by Kate Beaton. Um, I actually know Kate. Uh, she is a fellow Canadian from the, uh, the East Coast, East East Coast, Cape Breton, Nova oh, wow. Scotia. Um, so Kate got her start uh, just with like a self-made website and like scribbly <laughs> comics, but she, her, her specialty is historical comics and like literary comics and stuff. So she's, she takes on a lot of um, well-known or not as well-known um, Canadian politicians and stuff like that, or like sort of women that are on the sideline of history but have like really cool stories. And she just does these like very silly but smart <laughs> very comics. Funny. And very I just, funny. I absolutely adore her comics. She's she's so talented. You might know her if you are more familiar with picture books. She did um, Fat Pony oh. and uh, <laughs> what's the other one? The Princess and the, oh, The Princess and the Pony. and. She's done several now. You just you can find her everywhere. But this was Harka Vagrant was the name of her blog when she first started, and this was her first book, I believe. I love her. How did you how did you meet her? I used to date her cousin. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's cool. Um, so my next one is also a graphic. No, this one's a graphic memoir. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Um, and that is Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. This is another book I've talked about several times, and this is kind of stories from Allie's life dealing with like different mental illness problems, but approaching it in like, just the funniest way. Yeah. <laughs> just like, it is like peeing my pants funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she just like, she has this dog she, that's really dumb. She just calls simple dog. <laughs> and like, and she's just, there's stories in her, but there's a goose that broke into her house. And like, she retells the story of this, like hunting, like, like this evil goose that's like, hunting her in her own house. And like, <laughs> things that actually, and she has like, and for that story, she has like photographic evidence. She's like, this actually so happened. Funny. And the pictures are just like, hilarious. Yeah, that's what I love about her stuff is like, it, <laughs> it really shows you how, I, I think so she actually funny. is quite a talented artist, yeah. but this is like it's a very, very specific style. You might that recognize this because she gets memed she a gets lot. She gets memed yeah. a lot. Like the all the things meme. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's one of my That's a. Uh, yeah, and I just. And she also. The, she started out with a blog. Yeah. Um, and she's just so funny. Um, I cannot recommend this enough. <laughs> Pick it up from the library, or. Um, I know a lot of these are on her blog which is called a hyperbole and a half, mm -hmm. but a lot of them, there are some that are definitely exclusive to this book. And it's just like, I want to reread it because it's just 
No, like she seriously talks about mental illness. Yeah, it's like one of the best approaches I've ever yeah. seen to it. Like a true window into mental Definitely. illness. Definitely, but it's also just like it's just, I can't so express funny. how funny it is. Yeah. <laughs> just like yeah, yeah. tears so, down my face. Uh, like trying to read it on the bus and just like, <laughs> <laughs> and, like and it's just like a super fast read. So charming, and I, I love Alec Brosh. I know she does have another book coming down the line at some point, hopefully. But, cool. Um, just lost. And blurb by Jenny Lawson, another Yay. funny lady who writes about mental illness. With a yellow book cover. With a yellow book We don't book have it here now. <laughs> so yeah, definitely recommend this one. Awesome. All right. Um, where should I go next? I just read this recently, actually. It's been on my TBR for a while, and another buttery yellow. <laughs> That's uh, Not Now, Not Ever by Lily Anderson. So I actually discovered her with her other book, which is The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You, and that is... Yeah, the only thing worse than me is you. Sorry, it's such a mouthful. Um, and that one was kind of a much ado about nothing retelling, mm -hmm. but set in high school with the, uh, Beatrice and Benedict, Trixie and Ben, who are just at each other the whole <laughs> time. And it's just really fun and it was really refreshing. Um, this one was actually inspired by the importance of being earnest. And there's a lot of uh, quotes and stuff directly from that play in here. <laughs> and she's kind of going bunburying herself, bunburying <laughs> herself. She kind of like, runs away but everybody thinks that she's somewhere else but she's really off at this like academic summer camp to try and win a scholarship to go to school oh, huh. she comes from this like super military family so half of her family's like you must enlist and the other half right. wants her to do anything but that and maybe right. go into law school like her dad and she's just like i want to write science fiction like, <laughs> i don't want any of this so yeah it's just a lot of fun it's got a cute little y romance in it and i read it in like 24 hours cool yeah and this is a She's recently got very popular in the YA yes. community because she wrote Undead Girl Gang. That's right. Oh. Which got a lot of buzz this year. So she has previous books to check out as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Awesome. Mm. Next. Next. Mm. <laughs> Next I'm going to go... Okay, this is not actually a cover, but it's still iconic literary yes. yellow. It's and true. Yeah, it is it's true. Nancy Drew, because all of the spines are always yellow. Yeah beautifully displayed into all the boys I loved before. <laughs> yeah. She had the most incredible bookshelf of Nancy Drew and Hardy boys. And I was like, that's the shelf I want. <laughs> but uh, yes, I am a massive Nancy Drew fan. I have been since I was a kid. And I just, yeah, I, I definitely have a bookshelf as well with Have all, you read all, all of them? I have read most of the like original right. hardback ones. And now there's like a, a million other series and stuff, but and did you bring this one specifically because you like it? I brought this one specifically because it's actually the only one I have on my bookshelf. The rest right. are at my parents' house. Gotcha. My favorite one that I really should own a copy of myself is The Clue of the Whistling Bagpipes. Ooh. <laughs> All in Scotland. Sounds That's annoying. Fine. Whistling bagpipes. <laughs> Sounds annoying. Um, but yes, this is Nancy's Mysterious Letter. There you go. Yellow, iconic. Perfect. Love nice. you, Nancy. Perfect. Now, next one is one I read a couple years ago, and this is an adult contemporary, and that is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. Um, and I knew I had to pick this book when I'm like, yellow, because yeah. it's quite yellow. <laughs> totally yellow. <laughs> it's quite yellow. And this is a book that is kind of unlike anything I'd ever read before. Huh. Like, it has a really, it's not a mystery thriller or anything like that, but it has like this twist. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> not what I thought would happen. And it's about this young woman named Rosemary who doesn't, no longer speaks a lot and kind of had a traumatic event happen to her as a child to do with her family. And it's kind of, this book is exploring what actually happened because the event happened when she was five. So mm -hmm. the memories are not quite the properly there. Right. So she's remembering things different than they really were. And I just, it was, so smart, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like it was a very well written story. Mm -hmm. you know, it was just like unlike anything I'd ever read. Before, very clever, and I just also I'm not gonna lie. I love the cover. Yeah, it's <laughs> like it's very it's yeah. beautiful. Um, yeah, it's great. And it's shortlisted for the Man Booker and the Faulkner. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it and it's blurred by Colette Hassini, which is pretty cool. Looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, this is a very like, I had to, like, look at the synopsis and be like, is that in the synopsis? And the twist isn't in the synopsis. Right. So I can't, like, 
but something unexpected happens. <laughs> yeah. That's all I can say. <laughs> I always want to add things to my TBR when we do these. I know, yeah. we're always like <laughs> doing like, a bad uh, switch of things afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, number four. Number four, um, I'm going with um, Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Yellow and blue, but like more yellow than blue. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, if you open up the inside, yeah. Part. And then it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good map in there. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, wow. Right. It's a great map. Yeah. I love this edition. Cool. Um, yeah. So I was a huge fan of Fangirl. I read it like once a year. I think I mentioned that in a video mm -hmm. previously that I just always end up reading it <laughs> for some reason. Um, so this in Fangirl. She writes fan fiction, mm -hmm. and it's fan fiction of a version of this story. Mm -hmm. This is also kind of fan it's fiction. It's like Rainbow Rowell's take on her own fan fiction. Like, it's yeah, kind it's, of like... It's all in there. <laughs> but it's kind of like, it's very similar to Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. um, why did I just blank on the two main characters in this? Baz and Simon. Simon, Simon Snow, where is my brain? <laughs> um, so it's kind of about them. They go to a magical school and there's some sidekicks. And to be honest, when I first started reading this, I'm like, I don't like this book. Simon is just so annoying. <laughs> but then Baz shows up and it's like, oh my God, this is my favorite book ever. I just really liked the dy mm. dynamic between the two of them. And it was just a lot of fun. So YA fantasy. I had no idea that that was fantasy. I yeah. didn't know that anything that she wrote yeah. was fantasy. Yeah, it's really, uh, yeah. it was a lot of fun. We recently found out we're getting a sequel. What? Ooh. Really? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. That's really exciting. Cool. Yeah, I think I've both read this and listened to the audiobook, and the audiobook mm -hmm. was pretty cool. That's great. Oh. But yeah, he's, uh, oh, it's just so romantic. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know how it went from me being like, oh, this guy sucks, to like, oh, so good. <laughs> yes. Love it. Cool. All right. My next one is a picture book. Ooh. And that is One Gorilla Accounting <laughs> Book by Anthony Brown. Um, Anthony Brown is one of my very favorite picture book authors. Um, he writes and illustrates his own books. This is just like a accounting book, but he's got uh, some that follow more of a story. He has a great one about a zoo that might mm. just be called The Zoo. <laughs> um, but most of his books feature apes and monkeys cool. and this one is like I can just stare at this one Ooh, for so uh -huh. long like look how beautiful this is it's kind of got some shine on it here but we've got this like beautiful gorilla mm -hmm. so one gorilla <laughs> two orangutans orangutans are my very favorite animal oh, such have gentle. you ever met an orangutan before? no they're... Karina and I saw baby orangutans at the Dublin Zoo oh. in Ireland and they all I want in this so life is cute. to hold an orangutan and to hug a gorilla and to yeah, it's like all and the meet them all. <laughs> yeah, meet the monkeys, <laughs> meet all the great apes. See, that, and that's my life goal is to interact with a chimp because mm -hmm. they're so like us. And yeah. I just want to like meet a chimpanzee. Are there any bonobos in here? Bonobos are the ones that humans are actually the most like. Baboons. Very yellow. Gibbons. Look, guys, I could read you this whole book, but it, that's not what we're here for. <laughs> but uh, Anthony Brown is absolutely wonderful, and if you don't know him, go buy all of his books. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> um, so I have, I think I've talked about this book before, and that is This Is What Happy Looks Like by Jennifer E. Smith. And this is a book that I always recommend that if you're in like a bad mood and you just need to read something that's going to make you happy, <laughs> <laughs> like it's I read it at a time where I was like in the middle of moving to Vancouver I was yeah. like staying at Robert and Karina's old office and like oh, I right. was just like in like job hunting and it was just like a mess and I was so anxious and I read this in one afternoon and I was like okay oh, it's like a breath of fresh air <laughs> and this is about um two characters uh Ellie and Graham and they accidentally start an email relationship like he emails her by accident talking about his pet pig Wilbur <laughs> <laughs> and they start this um, like email relationship and it turns out he's it's not spoiler, it's all in the synopsis. He's like a famous actor. Oh. And he yeah. ends up filming a movie in her small town. So they meet and like have to like come reconcile having a relationship in real life outside right. of this email. <laughs> and it's just so darn charming. <laughs> it's just a nice a nice book. I feel like sometimes <laughs> it's hard to find a book where you can go into it knowing that you're not gonna be 
super upset at any yeah. point. Because like, and I get it, drama is a big part of fiction. <laughs> but sometimes I'm like, if you ever need a book that's just gonna make it's you smile, nice. like a romantic comedy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> this is this is the it one. Sounds like a combination of You've Got Mail and Notting Hill. From yeah, the way you yeah. Describe it. Perfect. And it's just, and her all of her books are so like pretty, and they have like yes. really cool things all, all through it, and they all. All of her books match typographically. I enjoy which is that. Satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I just want to put a smile on your face. <laughs> um, so, like we did with Red, I have four of my recs and I have one TBR. Mm. Um, and this one has been on my shelf for at least a year. And that is a mouthful of <laughs> The Many Lives of Catwoman, uh, The Felonious History of a Feline Fatale <laughs> by Tim Hanley. Um, I have not read this one yet, so it's a kind of a non-fiction book about like the evolution of Catwoman mm -hmm. from the cool. beginning to like who she is now. And I read his first one, which was about Lois Lane, and that yeah. one was really good. Um, so I have this one and his Wonder Woman. And I just like the way, I love the way that he writes. I never feel like I'm like... You know how some non-fiction books just seem really non-fiction-y <laughs> and you're like learning something and it's just kind of dry? It's like a textbook. His, yeah, his writing's really fun even though it has that little textbook feel to yeah. it. But, so yeah, I'm looking in, looking forward to reading this soon and learning it's a more. It's really cool cover. Yeah, yeah all his, all three covers in this kind mm -hmm. of series are just like, Very when cool. I saw them at BookCon the first year we went, I'm like, I need to buy all three of those. <laughs> yeah. I just need them. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. All right, your last one, Sally. My last one is also a nonfiction that has been on my TBR for ages, uh, and that is Wild Things, The Joy of Reading Children's Literature as an Adult by Bruce Handy. This is obviously very aligned with my interests. <laughs> um, Bruce Handy is a former writer for the New York Times, I believe. Uh, contri yeah, contributing editor at Vanity Fair. He's New York Times, um, He's a writer all over the place. But this is just him sort of like looking back at the history of children's literature, more specifically in America, although right. I think he might get some uh, British authors in there as well. Um, but just sort of like revisiting all of these books as an adult and like seeing how like subversive and interesting and intricate some of these things that we sort of think of as just a picture book right. or just right. for kids um, really can be. And, uh, and it's adorable. And yeah. it's, yeah, awesome cover, awesome uh, Dr. Oh, Seuss fun. inspired uh, end pages. Um, yes, I, I'm i so glad that we did Yellow because it reminded me again of this book. So I will actually <laughs> she read was, it before the year is she out. She was sitting here reading it as we were setting up. So. Yeah. <laughs> Started already. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, my final book is, there's many rendition, many covers for this book but mine is yellow, <laughs> and that is Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore by Robin Sloan, another adult novel. And it's another book that I think, if you like books, it's very different than A.J. Fickery, which is the other book I say that yeah. about. Like, it's a completely <laughs> different vibe, but it's super fun. And it's about a man named Clay who was a web developer, I believe, during like the most recent recession. Mm -hmm. So he gets doesn't have a job anymore and he starts working the night shift at Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore which and he soon kind of comes to realize that it's very like more than meets the eye like nobody ever <laughs> buys anything and there's a certain a few different customers but they only check out like very obscure weird titles from different <laughs> parts of the store and there's this huh. huge ledger ledger that Mr. Penumbra ke keeps and uh it kind of evolves into like this mystery and it's like global it's not like it's, it's, it becomes something much bigger than you think it's going to be <laughs> <laughs> and uh anything with a bookstore in the title you assume it's gonna be a nice quiet little story <laughs> um it's also the only book i think that i've ever read that celebrates all sorts of books so it celebrates print books it also is very pro ebook it's pro audiobook huh. so it like actively talks about different ways to consume literature yeah. and it's all in it's all valid and I'm like yes cool. <laughs> um, it isn't like poo poo on the ebook yeah. <laughs> so uh, but yeah I just I this is another one I really want to reread yeah. because there's just so much that goes into this little story and I was just super in, super intrigued by it and I think again if you're a book lover you'll probably be sucked into this story okay 
So that was a nice stack of yellow books that we either recommend to you or want to read. If you have any favorite yellow books, leave those in the mm -hmm. comments down below. We'd love to hear about it. Um, as always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye! Bye.